Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on radio propagation mechanism. Early on, I have done this free space path loss model. I have also done this Akumura Hata model. So I have explained when we can apply free space path loss model or Akumura Hata model. For this video, I'm going to explain what is a plane earth model. When can I actually apply this plane earth model? And I'm going to have an example how to apply this plane earth model in order to estimate the path loss in between the transmitter and receiver. So this will be the objective for this video. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, guys, thank you so much for your strong support. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's quickly understand what is actually a plane earth model, when we can actually apply this plane earth model. We come to this diagram shortly, but let's understand what will happen when the EM wave actually propagate over a plane Earth. Okay, if we consider the effect of the Earth's surface, the expressions for the receiver signal become more complicated than in the case of free space propagation. The main effect is that signal reflected off the Earth's surface may partially or totally cancel the line of sight wave. Okay, so what does this mean? For free space path loss, okay, I mentioned this is for free space path loss, we only have this line of sight wave. Line of sight wave means that they actually travel in one straight line. There is no obstacle in between the transmitter and receiver. Just like our eye, I can see you directly, which is called a line of sight. Okay, if something is blocked, then I will not call it as line of sight. For free space path loss, we typically have just only the line of sight wave. But for this plane earth model is slightly different. We also have this reflected wave. Once we have this reflected wave, it becomes a little bit more complicated. Okay, because the reflected wave can be out of phase with the line of sight wave, which can partially or totally cancel the line of sight wave. So this becomes undesired. In general, the two antenna, which is the transmit antenna and the receiver antenna, they have different height. The receiver signal have two components, which I have illustrated early on. The line of sight component and the reflected component. They actually, this reflected component actually will be formed, predominate by a single ground reflected wave. As you can see that this is a single ground reflected wave. Typically, this actually dominate and this is actually what we call a plane earth model. Okay, we assume that the earth is treated as a flat surface. Okay, we assume that the earth as a flat surface. Okay, but you can estimate a little bit of curve or a little bit irregular. Okay, it should be all okay when we actually apply this plane earth model. VHF, very high frequency, and UHF, ultra high frequency, and all those microwave signal which means that all those high frequency or RF signal, okay, normally they propagate by space wave. Okay, what is space wave? Space wave actually consists of direct wave, which is the light of sight wave, and also the ground reflected wave, which I have shown to you on the previous slide. So space wave consists of direct line of sight plus the ground reflected wave. Okay, reflection from the ground will cause energy loss, such that its antenation will be higher than the free space loss. In short, when we actually apply this plane earth model, okay, they actually will have a higher loss as compared to the free space path loss equation. Because remember, as I illustrated early on, the ground reflected wave can partially or totally cancel away the effect of the direct line of sight wave. At UHF okay, and above, okay, ground reflection loss are greatly reduced by using high directive antenna. Okay, we, when we actually use a very high directive antenna, okay, we actually minimize this reflected wave. When we actually do this very high directive antenna, most of the time we have this direct line of sight and therefore we can only apply this 
base space path loss to estimate the path loss in between the transmitter and receiver. In short, in order to resolve this ground reflection loss, we need to have a very high directive antenna so as to ensure that we only have this line of sight wave and we actually minimize this ground reflector wave in order to resolve this issue. Okay, this equation okay, is for the plane earth model calculation here. You can see that this is 120, this is distance in kilometer, the height and the receiver, okay, the height of the transmitter and receiver antenna. And typically you can see that from this equation, you can conclude that the plane earth propagation loss is independent of frequency as you don't see any frequency in this equation. And you can conclude that the, the propagation loss is doesn't depend on frequency. Let me share with you an example. Okay, how can we actually calculate this, this plane earth model? An aircraft is now approaching landing at a height of 1,000 meters. Okay, and is transmitting 5 watt to a control tower 10 kilometers away. So this is a transmitter, 1,000 meter. Okay, transmission power is 5 watt. Okay, the distance in between transmitter and receiver is 10 kilometer. The height of the control tower is 90 meter, okay, which is the height of the receiver antenna, 90 meter. Assume there is a ground reflected signal. Okay, when we actually assume that there is a ground reflected signal, then we can only use this plane earth model. Determine the receiving power in dBm at the control tower. Okay, so this is what I mentioned earlier on. Because there is a ground reflector wave, we can only use this plane earth model. We cannot apply this free space path loss model. Remember, for free space path loss model, we can only have one direct line of sight. Okay, if we have this ground reflector signal, we can't apply the free space path loss equation. So this is the equation that I mentioned to you earlier on. Okay, most of the parameter I have just explained. Okay, so this is the distance in between the transmitter and receiver. Okay, in kilometer, the question given to me is 10 kilometer, so I just put it 10. Okay, the height okay, for both the transmitter and receiver, as I mentioned earlier on, the height for the transmitter is 1000, the height of a receiver is 90. So over here, I can calculate that the free space, sorry, the path loss using this plane earth model, which is 60.9 dB. So once I got the path loss in between the transmitter and receiver, I can easily compute my receiver. Okay, I have my transmission power, which is 5 watt. Okay, I can convert them into dBm. Okay, how I can convert this is 10 log 5 watt divided by 1 mini watt. Okay, so I actually can calculate as 37 dBm. Okay, so this will be the receiver power in dBm. I use my transmit power in dBm minus away the path loss in dB. So from here, I can calculate that my receiving power will be minus 23.9 dBm. So over here, I have roughly defined what is a plane earth model. When can I actually apply this plane earth model? And I'm also having this example to show it to you. How can we actually calculate the path loss okay, using this plane earth model? And finally, after we calculate the path loss, we can also estimate the receiving power with this i like to end my discussion please sub to like and subscribe once again thank you so much for your strong support i hope to see you guys soon bye for now thank you so much